Hello, I'm John, and this is Fun with Film Order. Lights, camera, action! Let's have some fun. One of my subscribers, Nicholas Andrew, said in one of his comments, Love your tutorials, awesome. Thank you, Nicholas. Can you make a tutorial on keyframing, pan and zoom? Right now, I can only do a start and end when choosing pan and zoom. Would love to have keyframe control from beginning to an end of clip. And that's a great point. And it's also going to make a good tutorial, I hope, and it'll help some of you out there. So let's jump into Filmora. The first thing we'll do is we'll look at what we can do with the standard pan, crop and zoom effect in Filmora. So first of all, we'll get a piece of footage. I found a nice waterfall video that I shall drag down onto the timeline. Let's see how big that is. That's 36 seconds long. I'm just going to turn that right down to about 10, just for the purpose of this tutorial. I'll click on there to make it the full full length so we can see what's happening. And at the moment, it just plays and you see a lovely waterfall, um, but the actual image itself is static. It's not panning or zooming. So we're going to fix that. If you right click on the actual clip and go to crop and zoom and there's a new tab called pan and zoom click on that and you can see it has a box on the outside like a greeny color it says start on it and one on the inside that says end and that's a red color so what will happen when you play this now is it will start zooming in so it will start from there and zoom into there now we can change this to zoom out that icon there is from far to near which is the one you're on at the moment the next one along does it from near to far so it'll start zoomed in and then zoom back out so there we go that's what that looks like and then we have two other features we can do pan from left to right so it'll start there and go to the right but you see that the box is much smaller because if you had that box the full size of your image, it wouldn't be able to pan across anywhere. So that's why it has to be a part of your video. So that will look like that. Or an image. It doesn't have to be a video, be a video or an image. Okay, and then if we use the next one along from right to left and press play, it just goes the opposite way. Also, what we can do with these, as we can do with the pan and zoom uh, sorry as we can do with the zoom is we can change the size of these boxes so we can make it start full size and zoom right in and you just click on each one and it changes to green and that means that that's active and then you can shrink it down and move it around anywhere you want so we may want to zoom into that piece of the waterfall there let's see what that looks like so there's good options on this let me just reset that and also you can do similar things with the pan and zoom so you may want to start the pan at the top and let it pan right the way down to the bottom right which is a nice effect actually so it pans down across and down should I say sorry let me just reset that but what you can't do is pan and zoom properly at the same time you can a little bit and let me explain how to do that so let's go to a a pan We'll do the top one there and the bottom one there, say. And we'll make this top one bigger. So it will actually zoom and pan slightly. But you're quite limited. So let me just reset that. What we want to do is to create the pan effect in the crop and zoom feature. And then we'll use keyframing to do the zooming in right so let's do a left to right pan and um, that's in a good position because you'll see all the waterfall as it goes across there yeah because obviously if you had it further up if you had this up here you wouldn't see the waterfall you just see the top of the trees so let me just reset that and put it back on so pan from left to right so i'll apply that so now our footage does pan from left to right 
but we also want to create a zoom in now as well and we do that with keyframes so make sure you're at the start of the clip go up to your video basic tab and click on the transform keyframe there we'll now go to the very end of our clip and do another keyframe and I, I always click this keyframe because it puts keyframes on everything that you will require you can do it individually I don't bother now what I want to do in the middle of this clip around about five seconds I want to zoom in so you can either click on the keyframe but because you are using keyframes as soon as you make any adjustment an automatic keyframe will appear so as you see when I start zooming in you can see the keyframe has automatically kicked in there so I'm just going to zoom this into about 130 now don't forget you can drag the sliders or you can simply type in there 130 so now when we play it again it pans and it zooms in at the same time which is great that looks really nice then it'll zoom back out because I added the zoom in into the middle and then zoom back out to the end if you just wanted to zoom in and not zoom back out easily done so let's say we've just got the the pan from left to right at the moment with no keyframes we put our first keyframe in at the start our end keyframe in and once you put your end keyframe in all we need to do is increase the scale on that to whatever you want so now when we play it just pans and zooms in it doesn't zoom back out the other thing we can do with this is once we're at the end of the clip where we've zoomed in by using our keyframe we can actually move that around as well it doesn't have to stay in the center so for example we can use the y-axis to move it up and down to the size of the video so let's take it down to the bottom so what should happen now it should pan across I'll do it that way it should pan across zoom in and also move down slightly as well so there you see it great feature so I hope I explained that okay if it didn't please let me know in the comments I'll always come back to you and let you know and um, what we can do now is try it with a different type of clip so let's just delete that one and let's try it with a vertical clip might be a short might be a YouTube short or something like that so first of all let's play that okay how long is this clip let's have a look 32 seconds I'll just shrink that down to 10 seconds again for demonstration purposes and make it the full length again the first thing we do is we need to add the pan on so right click and go to crop and zoom and click on the pan and zoom tab now because this is vertical when we click on the pan and zoom feature you see you'll only get a short pan and zoom but because this is a vertical one it'll look much better if we pan and zoom from the top so what I'll do is I'll make this pan and zoom I keep saying pan and zoom sorry I'll make this pan follow the waterfall because if I had it there it just goes straight down so for example all you would see is that and you might miss a bit of the waterfall out so I'm going to move that part of it over to the right so that it, it'll zoom <laughs> sorry it'll pan I keep getting me pan and zooms mixed up it's me zoom <laughs> set it again oh god come on John come on John wake up it'll pan down and across to the right thank god for that <laughs> So that looks nice let's apply that feature so at this moment in time we've just got the pan going from the top to the bottom and just following the waterfall now we want it to zoom in just slowly till it gets to the end of the waterfall we do that with keyframes again make sure you're at the start of the clip click on the transform keyframe we'll go to the end of the clip add another keyframe and it's at this last keyframe that we want to increase the size so I won't take it up too much I'll just increase it to maybe a hundred just about 120 that'll do let's take that back to the start and see what that looks like 
Yeah, that's quite a nice feature there. It's following the waterfall down. It's going slow. It's zooming in. And then when it gets to the end, it zooms in. Now, what I might do actually is I might zoom in a bit more so that the whole of the waterfall covers the image or covers the frame. That might look quite good. Let's try that again. So I'll just keep zooming in. Let's give that a go, see what that looks like. Yeah, so it's zooming in, zooming in. It's making the frame bigger. And then you get to the end of the waterfall. So that looks really nice. So let's try this again now with an image. And the best images to use are panoramic images. This is a static image. I'll just make that about 10 seconds long by dragging it across. And you can see the reason why I've chose this is because it will pan from left to right quite nicely. So let's right click, crop and zoom, go to the pan and zoom, and let's click on our pan from left to right. In fact, let's do it from right to left this time for the change. Right to left, and you can see that'll make a nice long pan and zoom. So let's just check that out first of all. Let me just check that again. Yeah, that's quite a nice pan and zoom. That's a quite a nice pan, not a zoom, that's quite a nice pan. Okay, so let's click apply. And we can see it here now. I like that, from right to left. But, got a couple of black bars there. Now, what you'd normally do with an image or something like that is right click and do crop to fit. If we do this now, it doesn't work. It just crops the whole image. So, don't do crop and fit. Let me just undo that. Control Z on your keyboard undoes your last action. So we've still got our video here. What we need to do to get rid of these black bars before we do any keyframing is just increase the size of the scale of the, the actual footage. So take that to uh, hide the black bars at the top and bottom. And now we need to move it across so we can see the start of the video. So we click on the Y axis if you put your mouse over the numbers there, you'll see there's like a little arrow back and forth. Click and hold your left button on the mouse and drag. I'm using the wrong axis to begin with. <laughs> what a bad day today. But it shows you what it does. It actually moves it up and down. Let me just um, put that back to north. It's the X axis we want from right to left. Pan and zoom, right and left. I don't know which is which, but I hope you follow me. I'm not following me. I hope you are. Okay, so we need to move to the beginning of the clip. So wait till your mouse turns to those two little arrows. Left click and hold and then drag your mouse. There we go. So I'll just put it back to there so it starts there. I got it right that time. Thank you. And if we click on play, you'll see it'll pan across. That's great. So I'll go to the start of the clip. I'll put a transform keyframe on there. I'm going to zoom in and then zoom back out again. So always go to the start and the end of the clip first and put your keyframes in because they will stay the same then at the start and at the end. And then in the center, about five seconds, you want it to zoom in. So again, go there and either click on to add another keyframe, which you can do, or just control Z, or you can just actually move the sliders and it'll create a keyframe automatically. As you can see there, you see the little green uh, diamonds come up. So I'll just zoom in, let's see, quite a bit to there. Let's go back to the start and see what that looks like. Great effect. And you've got so much more control over the zooming in and zooming out when you're using keyframing. Um, you can also do it the other way around. You can do the zoom in and out on the crop and pan. Sorry, on the crop and zoom. <laughs> you can't get that right, can I? On the pan and zoom, you can obviously use the zoom in and out and then do the panning on keyframing, but I've found this works a lot better. You have more control over the zooming in, which panning from left to right is quite straightforward. You'll either go left and right or up and down or, you know, on a diagonal, which the Filmora standard version of pan and zoom does for you, but you may want to zoom in on a specific object that's in the image, or you may want to zoom in to a certain percentage, and you've got more control 
using the zooming in features when doing keyframe. Anyway, that's the end of that tutorial. Hope I didn't make too much of a mess of it. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you followed it. And if you don't, if you didn't, if there's anything you didn't understand or went a bit quick or made a mess of it, please let me know in the comments below and I, and I will rectify that for you. But like I said, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks again for watching. Please let me know what you thought of this tutorial in the comments below. And don't forget, if you'd like to see a tutorial, let me know. I would really appreciate it if you checked out my other videos. And don't forget to enter our £50 free monthly giveaway. Mm -hmm.